Thank you for your support of our students. They have done you proud. And we hope, and we hope we have served them well. And while much of the focus in this institution is on developing the technical skills for success, ours is not a value-free environment. When Hubert Humphrey stood up at the 1948 De Democratic National Convention and exhorted the Democratic Party to walk out of the shadow of states' rights and to march forthrightly into the bright sunshine of human rights, he stood for the proposition that public institutions have a role and a responsibility to promote objectives consistent with the values of a democratic society, non-discrimination, inclusion, equal rights and justice for all. So given the current tenor of our current, of our national political debate, um, I've thought a fair about, amount about what I might say this afternoon, a few words beyond my traditional welcome. Of course, what I won't address is the question of what one's partisan political preferences ought to be or ought not to be. We are a nonpartisan institution. But as I mentioned, we are not a value-free or an evidence-free institution. So what does a dean say to graduates, say to you all, going into the world of practice as we observe around us public discussion in which there is considerable support for calls for a complete and total shutdown of Muslims entering the United States, and what to say about public po to public policy and grad public affairs graduates about public discussion in which there is sympathy or at least acceptance for nasty expressions of intolerance toward the disabled, toward women, toward immigrants and others. And I've thought a lot about this over the past couple of days, and I realize that I probably don't have to say much, as I expect, as I know, these challenges not only steal the determination of our students, students who are hopeful and optimistic about the boundless potential of humankind, but who are not naive about obstacles to progress. In contrast to some of the tenor of the public discussion today, comments that largely guide our students and our community are from a political figure of another generation who said, and I quote, that if we believe in our past and have faith in our future, we must dedicate ourselves to making each man, each woman, each child in America a full participant in American life. A public figure who said, and I quote again, that equality means equality for all, no exceptions, no yes, buts, no asterisk footnotes imposing limits. A political figure who said, and I quote one more time, that we must make America a land where no one is forgotten and in which we make our prosperity not the servant of our selfishness, but the instrument of our conscience. And of course, in all these statements, you all know who I'm quoting. <laughs> it's Hubert Humphrey, our school's namesake, who was so very uneasy. who was so very uneasy to use Humphrey's words about leaders who base their authority on the passions and hates of people. Hubert Humphrey spoke a good deal about the purpose of politics and about political leadership, and frankly, it's an issue that occupies, in one way or another, a fair amount of discussion at the Humphrey School, as it should. The conservative columnist, Michael Gerson, who was a speechwriter and advisor to former President George W. Bush, recently wrote about this issue and used words that well could have come from Hubert Humphrey when he wrote that truly inspiring leaders identify with the vulnerable among us and like Hubert Humphrey said in so many ways, Gerson writes, and I quote, the justice of a political system is determined by its treatment of the vulnerable and weak, a commitment that is inconsistent with the type of politics that beats up on the vulnerable and weak. So I'd encourage you all, Though again, I don't need to encourage you. I don't need to encourage you to do that which you will already do. Um, rather, I'll express our school support for you, for you all, as you take the long view and appreciate that chauvinism, that nativism, that bullying is nothing new to our political culture, whether it is our original sin of slavery, 19th century know-nothing appeals to anti-immigrant sentiment, 
early 20th century anti-Semitic rants, say, like those spewed by Charles Edward Coughlin, who had tens of millions of followers during the 1930s, or later 20th century trafficking in innuendo and guilt by association of Senator Joe McCarthy. There have always been loud voices of intolerance appealing to our fears rather than our hopes and rather than our aspirations. And to our international students, and to all our students, you know well that this challenge is not confined to the borders of the United States. We find intolerance around the world, from Burma and India to Austria, Greece, Denmark, and other parts of Europe, to Central Africa and beyond. Our challenge, your challenge, is twofold, it seems to me. First, to confront and contest forthrightly those loud voices of intolerance at each and every turn, and as difficult as this may be, to promote a politics of civility that recognizes and seeks to address real fears and anxieties of millions of Americans who feel threatened, and millions around the world who feel threatened by rapid change that seems out of their control. And I think we all know that Hubert Humphrey wouldn't have it any other way. So Humphrey students, you have our deep and enduring support as you go out into the world to realize the principles that have animated your years with us. And that makes a life of service so valuable, a commitment to the common good in our increasingly diverse, complex, and exciting world. So now...